Hey guys, I'm Jay, one of the co-founders of Execute and welcome to our gym. Come inside, let's go have a look. Come on in, follow me. So this is the entrance of Execute. Over here at the back, we have our booster bar. The booster bar is where you hang out. In the corner there is beautiful Eliana, one of the other co-founders. Say hello. Hello. Now execute, our whole concept is about the five senses. So through your workout here, you'll experience the five senses. One of the first things is sight, sound, taste, smell, feel. That's our gym, guys. When we started the gym, we had a look at our business model and we said, what is our business model? Uh, because A, there's phase one, open the concept, test proof of concept, phase two, uh, two and three number gyms, and then phase four between 10 to 50 uh, franchises, right? But within that, we 100% want to be full Chinese. But when we open up, I have a very big following, but all of them are mainly foreigners. And uh, so we're like, well, we didn't have money for marketing and advertising. So in the beginning, let's Let's aim on the foreigners to just launch the concept and get it out. And then at a later stage, we will flip to the Chinese Chinese market. So for the very first beginning, it was that purely because of our reach. Our reach was just through uh, WeChat, through the people we had. And then now we've gone to Daisha Dianping and onto Class Pass. So I would say in the last two months, our uh, local has gone up by 30 to 40 percent now so and now as it's coming they you know the, the local I would say actually are impressed more about the concept they come in here oh wow wow this is so cool uh, you know the foreigners they're like oh yeah it was a cool class so I would say uh, more Shanghai niece is more acceptable to the the concept than I would say a foreign is but we're just limited in the beginning as we can't speak Chinese uh, which which makes it a little bit harder a eh, for marketing and if, if clients walk in uh, but yeah definitely not our focus our focus is not as expats at all just happen to be like that I, I wouldn't say culture barrier I think it's just pure marketing you know being able to go onto a platform in Chinese onto the phone call in Chinese uh, with culture I would say no because when people come into our class, whether they can speak English or not, that's not a problem. You can, we, you can communicate with body language. Okay, well, one, E, R, San, R, T, G, San, T, G, Jayo, go. And, and that's enough to sort of, and, and exercise is the same language. It doesn't matter what language you are. You squat, you look at someone, you, you can go, go over that. Uh, I think it's just more being able to reach out and get a hook into the Chinese market. Uh, is the hardest part you know for example through this build through building the gym we got a lot of tools and learned a lot of things that most expats aren't too aware of for example you know searching on Taobao Eliana is a Taobao specialist now uh, how to find different things negotiating with sellers on Taobao to reduce the price up to like 35 percent you know, who does that? Most people go on to Taobao, they find something, they buy it. She's like, no, I'll market, I will, I will speak to them, I'll get a cheaper price. So we've learned a lot of things as we go. And when we speak to other business owners, they don't understand a lot of the tools. Um, so I would, I would definitely say, yeah, not cultural at all. I think it's just knowledge sort of as you go into it, learning about the industries, the tools behind the business. The younger generation now speaks English really, really good. Two, three years ago, that was still a bit more difficult, but now most of the people that walk through here, uh, I would say eight out of 10 can speak fluent English. And if not, you know, we have our guy that works here who can, who can speak to them. Uh, but I don't think it, it affects too much now on the, on the sales side of things. That's more uh, on jumping. <laughs> jumping is a powerful tool. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite funny. I look at our boxing bag there. One of the first quotes we have on the boxing bag is called confidence. I think because we're confident in who we are and what we do. Uh, you know, behind the scenes, we know what we can do and how good we can do it. Um, we don't 
particularly tell the world that we believe it's the best, but in our own minds, whatever we do, we know that we can be the best at that. And if we do it right, it will be successful. So I think confidence really lies in your own mind. It actually all goes back down to confidence. We've sort of had a look at our thing. We've had about four or five investors approach us this year, different amounts as it's grown and sort of we, we've evaluated the company. If we had a big investment in the beginning, we would have been able to have done that, but we wouldn't have learned the lessons and brought up the value of the company. So I think at a later stage, yeah, we definitely will look at investors, but only on a franchise point of view not on actual execute uh, because if it's investment into execute then when you franchise I believe this is going to be a very successful franchise and we will have 50 locations within the next five years so I always think of the bigger picture if I want to go that big how can I make this first scale as big as possible so that in the future the gains will be high but also understanding an investor now could also help you get, even though maybe you bet half, half a pie, half a pie, if there's a hundred pies, it's more than a full pie of one pie. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a very, very gray area, um, but we sort of see as we go, but we really believe the concept can work and, and scale uh, if, if we do it right. I think the concept of success always depends on the individual. You know, I have a friend who's a multi, 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 multi millionaire, doesn't need, to, uh, doesn't need to work for the rest of his life, but he still opens up companies and his, his words are, uh, for me, success is about starting something and achieving a goal that I set. And for me, that's normally in numbers. Finances don't lie. If a company is successful, it shows. But my, our version of success has got nothing to do with, with finance. I think it's got more to do of, I have a dream, I have a goal, and I create it. So be, behind Execute is actually uh, on all of our shirts, you can turn around, we have our saying is create your own reality. Part of the logo, we have two symbols. So when there's a world, there's a way and create your own reality. It's both from the, the Greek uh, symbol and the Inga signal. So for us, it's we had a dream, we, we created it and we executed it to the best that we could. So in terms of that concept, our version of success is not, oh yes, we fantastic, we survived a year, how much money we earn. It's more about our different steps. First step was we built the place. Second step was this. Third step was that. And then the steps that made it for us, I think, successful, and I think I speak for both of us, was we've had an impact on a couple of members' lives that we did not expect. Uh, people telling us we saved their marriages from people going off medication that the, showing us letters said, look, my doctor said I don't need to take this medication after 20 years. People surviving heart attacks. Uh, and for us, these like little testimonials, uh, people getting tattoos of the gym because it changed their life. For us, that means that we were successful in our goal in giving people the tools and they used it.